It's called chain drilling. Not the most advised process it's involved in. That's a little better. Quite often you just don't get there. Let's give it a go. I'll put the first hole through with this 10mm slipper. I have to admit it's not a very sharp slot drill. About due for me to put up on the grinder. It's pulling swarf out. Holes are nice and shiny. No wall plucking because it's a 90 degree bottom on the drill. If you're careful as it goes through, it'll all work out good. I'll bring you back in a few minutes. Okay guys, let's try that again. Hold on the specs. You notice this time it's just a twist drill in there. Jobber drill. You can see the cap until you have a hole. There we go. called zero angle drill grinding. If you want to learn how to chain drill, I can teach you, I hope. It's many, many years since I learned. That's got a quite a nice gap there. It hasn't run into the other hole. It's drilled quite central. I've just sharpened that drill offhand for the first time in about 20 years, and it was okay. Bring it a little bit closer. Welcome back to in my shed, I'm BC. So the drama came first this time. <laughs> I had to see if I could still do it, it's been so bloody long. It's a process developed by Jack Tyson over in New Zealand back in the 70s for jet engine work. Um, he developed and um, adapted it to multiple situations. I just sharpened that offhand. I'm trying to get a drilling jig that'll do the work accurately. Uh, and to show you how to do that. If you want to do it offhand, well, I'll give you the how-to on that. The twist drill doesn't have a 118 degree center. It's a flat bottom drill or one or two degrees off flat bottom with a 60 degree included angle pyramid. That is clearance ground about 45 degrees. So from the front of the cutting edge, it shows a pyramid and from the side, it shows two facets. Uh, Reasonably easy to do. Having said that, in inverted commas, it probably took me about 10 hours of practice to get one drill that would make anything like a hole. It has its disadvantages. Uh, with most holes, uh, through holes, it pops a disc off the end that will stick onto the bottom of the drill and you've got to manually whack it off with a piece of wood or stop the drill and remove it before you go on to the next hole. To prevent that happening, instead of zero angle, you can crank it up to about 3 degrees. There is no wall plucking, the technical term, where you're dragging material in from the side of the hole and that's what gives you the furry finish in a lot of holes. It gives you a lot of radial instability, it gives you sizing issues. There's a lot of problems with it. 
However, uh, disadvantages, until you learn how to do it, you can't do it. You need a DS1 dressing stick or a diamond dresser to address the side of the wheel, and I'll show you what I've done there. Uh, you can't enlarge a hole. If you've got a 10mm pilot, you can't come in with a 13mm drill and enlarge it because you don't have anything to stabilise or locate that 60 degree centre. And I'll admit it, I only have one or two drills, including this one, zero ground, in my toolkit because I don't do enough repetitive work to warrant it. Uh, it's beautiful on sheet metal, uh, especially stainless steel. And I learned a lot from this older bloke. Uh, just a quick phone conversation, but the reams of information he sent me, uh, it was his life's work, I think. He put together a very good package. It was the very first item I tried to sell and I crashed woefully, crashed and burnt. And the reason was probably 95%, I'd say that would be roughly the correct percentage of Australian tradesmen can't sharpen drills. And lo and behold, I can hear the up wall, bullshit, bullshit, I can sharpen a drill. Okay, I would say 95% of the guys I demonstrated to couldn't. And if you can't sharpen a 118 degree drill, you don't want to be trying to do something that's not conventional or, or special purpose, whatever. And it took me probably six or seven months of tears and grief to realise that that was the problem. Anyway, I'll uh, take the drill out of the chuck and bring it up and try and give you a bit of a close up. I'll show you the grinding wheel that I've just touched it up on. And then we'll have a look at what I'm trying to achieve with a tool and cutter grinder. Not that I'm saying a tool and cutter grinder is necessary. You, as I said, you can offhand this if you want, but I'm trying to prove a concept, I suppose you'd say. And as soon as we finish here, I'll bring you in and show you the chain drill. I have experimented a lot with this in the past and you can go over um, at least a quarter into the next hole. So that gives you quite a good advantage there. It's absolutely fabulous in Perspex. If you zero rake the flute, you can drill right up to the edge of the Perspex and the the side of the hole in Perspex is reasonably clear. You can drill non-ferrous materials and there are several modifications to the standard zero angle point. Try and get it up close enough for you to see it. Do a bit of a pirouette. You see it's a flat bottom drill with a 60 degree relieved pyramidal point. There, that's <laughs> a big word for me. Okay. I'll turn this off, move the camera around and show you what the holes are like. Okay guys, back again. I'll step back a bit from the mic so it doesn't clip the volume so much. Uh, the two holes on the left are what I did with the uh, rather blunt 10mm slot drill. It gave a reasonable finish in the hole as depicted by that one there. It was fairly straightforward. Everything's clamped up well so this is a an excellent example, but yes, it did a bit sit drilling. Not any really good if you're uh, using it by hand, of course. Here we have what I just did with the zero angle drill. Quite a big slot in there full of swarf, but you can see quite clearly, especially in the second hole, how good the uh, wall is. It, it came up, I uh, would say, reasonably well. So it, it's a reasonable process. It's more of a special purpose process. You don't use this every day, but there are a lot of instances where this supersedes uh, standard 180 degree points uh, by a substantial amount. Anyway, I'll take you over to the uh, <laughs> clamp down bench grinder that I use to uh, sharpen a drill, and then we'll get on to a little bit of an exercise uh, on the tool and cutter grinder. One modelly old bench grinder, which has been with me for 40 years. I can't believe how good they made them back then, although this one does have a banana chart. Now if you have a close look at the wheel, and I'll get my super pointing screwdriver. It's not so easy to discern there, but the side of the wheel is chamfered at 30 degrees to that surface, a bit on that angle, and it's taken back about 6 millimeter. That's usually enough to get the point that you want. And what I used is a DS1 dressing stick. 
very very cheap uh, that's only a Chinese uh, 60 grit wheel and uh, yeah it grinds up quite well it takes a little bit of forming um, after I go through the tool and cutter exercise I'll show you uh, setting up on the offhand operation that does take a little bit of skill uh, the big problem is you're always trying to give it a bit more clearance uh, grind more clearance around the point than is necessary so you're over grinding and that's what causes the process to fail can we get on the drill a little bit further that's the point on the drill anyway I'll show you a little bit more later on bye for now Good day there guys welcome back to the shed again once again sorry about that fan in the background uh, I thought I'd get you up a little bit closer zero angle drill grinding that's about as high as I can magnify it I think it's not that serious an operation I've dressed the side of the grinding wheel at 30 degrees to the face so it's 30 degrees that way not 30 degrees that way uh, and used a DS1 dressing stick for doing the operation it's rather messy and noisy so I did it with the camera off but I've freshened up that face a little bit and took the wobble out the front of the wheel now think about the geometry you have the cutting edge horizontal cutting edge horizontal in front of the wheel now the angle you hold the drill at controls the amount of clearance behind the cutting edge which is pretty obvious now that you're watching that close I normally aim at just above the center of the wheel and that uses the curve of the wheel to create the clearance now it doesn't really matter exactly where you position on your tool rest if you aim above the center of the wheel you'll always get positive clearance now the point of the drill you can see from the cutting edge it's a 60 degree included pyramid so all I do is I plunge on either side to get equal lengths and then plunge into your contact and rotate about 30 degrees so roll it over plunge in again and rotate about 30 degrees and that grinds the radial clearance behind the center of the drill it takes quite a bit of practice quite a bit of getting used to but once you do that you'll see that from the side uh, it's got a double angle pyramid and from the front it's a single angle pyramid okay I'll start to grind up and make some noise and grind the drill Okay, this is about as good as I could show you and maintain focus. Here you can see the primary clearance is ground in behind the cutting edge. And as I said, you'll notice that if you look perpendicular to the cutting edge, you'll see a straight pyramid. But if you look at 90 degrees of the clearance area, there's a much coarser angle up the top so it's a two-stage pyramid takes a little getting used to you'll know you're right when the force required to push the drill is reduced substantially so I'll try and get a, another picture from the other side of the wheel to let you get a bit better of an idea of getting the angle right get your clearance back in a sec okay this is coming in from the other side of the grinder and it might make it a 
a little bit simpler. If you're using the tooth rest, just aim above the centre of the grinding wheel, plunge in to form one edge, roll it over, plunge in to form the other edge, and then just rotate about 30 degrees. Now if you have a large drill and you have a lot of material that you have to take out, not just rebuilding it, what you can do is go to a roughing wheel and take most of the V out using the radius edge of a standard grinding wheel and come across here and do a finished grind. Okay, I realise I've probably confused you quite a bit on grinding this. Um, next, in the next episode, I'll set up the spin vexer. I've realised that using the uh, work head on the Clarkson just isn't going to be practical, so I'll try and use the spin vexer. It's easy enough dropping in the pins. Uh, once I've got that mounted up, you'll see a little bit more about getting the clearance angles right. Uh, I've thought about the indexer, and uh, honestly, it does it does look promising. It would work, but working two indexing fingers at the same time I'm just going to end up with a bloody mess <laughs> okay so bye for now see you in the next episode and uh, please like and subscribe <laughs>